Welcome back. It is Wednesday, April 24th in the NBA. My two best bets are on the way. We only got two playoff games today, but I have my favorite pick in each of them incoming. Before we do that, let's recap how we did yesterday. It was a one in one day. Let's talk about it. Our loser of the day, TJ McConnell's over in points. Just a donation. Bad read on my end. Not going to touch on that one anymore. Now, the Rudy Gobert one is interesting because, of course, he ends on 27. We had his under 27 and a half. I know some people took the 26 and a half and lost there because he gets a rebound with, you know, two minutes to go and then gets subbed out a immediately after that just painful i know some people went 0 2 yesterday i hate these types of days where you know it ends right in the middle so i'm trying to at least give back a little bit i know it's been a bad you know stretch the last few days we're doing a giveaway though on twitter so if you're watching this video early on in the day i appreciate you but in the, my pinned tweet i tweeted out you know the gobert winner but also apologizing that for the 26 and a half if you just go and like that post by 12 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to draw four winners to win 50 bucks. So I know that's not the easiest thing for the people on YouTube that you guys are watching it here, but it's the easiest way for me to do a giveaway. It's just on Twitter because I can sort all the likes and just pick four random people. So if you want to like that, like I said, I'm going to do the drawing at 12 p.m. Eastern. It'll be my pin tweet until then. But without further ado, let's dive into the picks today. We got two games on. Last time I wore the sweatshirt in an NBA video. We went 3-0, so today we're trying to go 2-0. The first one, we're going to start in Boston, where we got the Celtics in the Heat game. And I'm taking Drew Holiday. He's over 10.5 points, plus 100 on FanDuel. Personally, I'd be shocked if this line went to 11.5. So I don't even think you're going to have to play a different line. You might get different odds, plus 100. I'll take that on FanDuel. I considered laying some juice at minus 130 on the 10-plus points, but... End of the day, Drew's either going to get 10 and a half or he's probably not getting the job done. Now, if you were to look at game one of the series, Drew Holiday didn't, re didn't really play too well. Obviously, he's out there for mostly defensive purposes, but offensively, he didn't play well. Scored six points, shot two of eight from the field. He missed four layups. And now I got to give credit to where credit is due. Peyton Pritchard and Sam Hauser played really well off the bench. But here's Drew Holiday's shot chart. The guy missed legitimately four layups. It was four like, oh. Put it in. Nope. It wasn't like he was getting packed at the rim. No, he was missing basically wide open layups. Obviously, Tyler Hero is kind of down there trying to contest them, but there were wide open shots that I'm used to. And I'm sure everyone that watches Drew Holiday is used to him making those shots. And I expect them to make them tonight. Drew Holiday has been a consistent part of this rotation. Obviously, like I said, he's out there for a ton of defense, uh, defensive purposes, but he is arguably the best matchup on the court for the Miami or for the Boston Celtics against the Miami Heat. He's going to be defended likely by Tyler Hero. And that's a matchup that Drew was like, all right, let's go to work. And he would drive to the hoop. The problem was he was missing the layups. Now, obviously, Drew Holiday is a decent three-point shooter, and he actually shot 46% on catch-and-shoot threes this season. But at the end of the day, I expect Drew to be able to get and knock those threes down but also get to the hoop where he just missed some easy shots. And we saw in the full season when Boston was fully healthy, when they had Chris Tops, KP, Tatum, Brown, and White, he averaged about 12 points per game. He went over this line in 68% of games. When he played 30 or more minutes, the hit rate went up to 77%. So, like I said, he was really, really consistent. He's not a guy that's really going out there and dropping 20 points, but he's going to go out there and do his job and going to get to those spots, especially when he's playing with that second unit. And he, I don't expect Miami to really sag off on those three-point shooters. I think they're going to be okay if Drew Holiday beats them. We saw in the regular season, Drew Holiday 17, 17, and 15 points in three regular season games, obviously, against the Miami Heat. I think this is a great spot to back him. I feel like that game one, if we could get another eight field goal attempts from him, I would take that any day of the week. Normally pretty efficient, especially with the looks he's getting. They're pretty wide open looks. And I think he'll be able to drive to the hoop against Tyler Hero, who I consider to not be a very good defender. If and when he gets there, I don't expect them to sag off the three point lot guys because they just gave up 22 threes. Or like Drew Holiday, though, today over 10 and a half points. A role player at home. No more role players on the road. I really like Drew Holiday's over in points. Today. Plus 100. I'll take it. Now, like I said, let's move to the second game Pelicans versus the Thunder. I'm not taking a lot of role players on the road. I actually really wanted to run back Herb Jones, but I can't sit here and give out a Herb Jones pick and watch him go two for eight again from the field and just want to throw something. I will be rooting for Herb Jones, and if he clanks up today, I'll probably back him at home on in game three. But I'm sad I'm going to go to an OKC player. And I'm back in J-Dub, Jalen Williams of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Over 23.5 points plus rebounds, minus 125 on BetMGM. Now, I anticipate some books move up to 24.5 for this one. I don't mind it there. Probably only a half unit play. As we all know, we know how sharp these lines get, especially in the postseason. I almost took his points plus assists here. That's 23 and a half as well. If you're on the points plus rebounds and it bumps up to 24 and a half, I'd probably honestly prefer his PRAs at like 28 and a half. I just, I, something about the rebound, it's hard. I was going back and forth. Obviously, individual line points is the way to go. Now, why am I back in the rebounds? Well, in game one, Jalen Williams had 
played 40 minutes, which is a lot, 19 points on eight of 18 shooting, one for five from three, but he also had seven rebounds on nine rebound chances. Now, I'm not going to come out here and say Jalen Williams is a terrific rebounder. He's not really a huge rebounder. It's not like he's going out there and get eight, nine, 10 rebounds. If he gets 10 rebounds tonight, this will hit. But he's also a guy that plays a lot of minutes and he's going to be out there and it's not like he's like four foot one tall. I mean, he's six foot five with a long wingspan. You got Chet Holmgren having a box out. Jonas Valanciunas with like 20 rebounds. Josh Giddy, their second best rebounder. He only played 20 minutes. I anticipate him to consistently be involved in Pelicans plays. They're going to make him defend, which is why he's probably not going to play a lot of minutes in this series. So I went towards the points plus rebounds because the difference, you got points at 19 and a half, points plus rebounds at 23 and a half. We need four rebounds from J-Dub to make them equal. He had four rebounds in a lot of games this season, but he also had four rebounds in seven of eight career games first to Pelicans, six rebounds in five of eight. So if we even could get six rebounds, that'd be terrific. I'm not expecting six, I'm expecting probably four or five, but J-Dub averaged about five rebounds in games when he played 35 more minutes. Obviously in the postseason, everyone's hustling for those rebounds. So it's not like you're like in a regular season game, where you're like, yo, check, you clean that up it's like all right everyone needs to crash the glass so don't mind j-dub here to get some rebounds as well but at the end of the day we're going to need points and that's something i expect him to be consistent he's a guy that they trust with the ball in his hands and this season he's over this line in 65 percent of games with 30 or more minutes played 79% with 35 more minutes. I mean, when he shoots 15 times to 82% hit rate. So it's a guy that they just play a lot of minutes, 40 minutes in game one, a great sign for us. I don't expect 40 minutes in game two, but if we can even get to the 35, which I think should be a pretty safe floor, I really think he's got a good spot here. So J-Dub's a guy they love defensively, but also love offensively running this offense. I expect him to make those shots. He missed some easy shots. I mean, I, I put a shot chart up. I'll put a shot chart up right now. I mean, these are some shots that we're used to Jalen Williams making some offensive rebounds that he just missed on some putbacks and things like that. Also a great guy in transition. I really like Jalen Williams though. I like his over 23 and a half points plus rebounds. This is a little bit of a faster paced game. This should be a pretty good one for us. They're still going to put so much defensive focus on SGA. I really think J-Dub is in for a good spot. If he can consistently see those 15 shots, he should be able to get this line done. So give me his over 23 and a half points plus rebounds. My favorite pick in that Pelicans and Thunder game. I'm not going to force any other picks. Like I said, when you only have a two game slate, you don't really want to force a ton of action. I feel like when you force a ton of action, either you're going to have a really good night or a really trash night. There's no in between. And with the playoffs, things are kind of hard to predict, as you guys probably know. But the last few days have been a little bit lackluster, but I know we're going to turn things around. Really felt like yesterday's McConnell read was trash, but I really like these two reads today. Jalen Williams and Drew Holiday. Jalen and Drew are taking us home, getting us a 2 0 day. And if we go 2 0, I'll wear the city again tomorrow. I, I don't really care. I'm, I'm superstitious. I'll take it again and try to roll with the hot streak. Those are our favorite picks of the day. As always, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Reminder, if you checked out the, the video early and it's not 12 p.m. Eastern time where you are, go to my Twitter, hit that like button on that pinned tweet, and you could potentially win 50 bucks. I'm sorry yesterday's Rudy Gobert was just, just annoying. I... I I'd rather honestly sometimes lose than cash on the hook like that. That is just frustrating, but I'm confident today's a 2-0 day. Drew and Jalen, we need you to be at your best, and I think you will do just that. It's Austin signing out. See you guys back tomorrow with some more picks. We'll see you guys then recapping a 2-0 day, hopefully. Peace!